refrigerant charge 2018 Nissan Rogue SV model. So on this Nissan Rogue, if we can uh, do a little focus here, on Apple, we got 500 grams of refrigerant that we'll be putting in. This is the engine chassis model 2018. And remember, different countries have different engines and different style models. So sometimes this sticker will not give you the right charge if you have a if you're in another country and you don't have the same platform, the charge quantity may be different. So if you're in a different country, always look it up. Now, a piece of news that I just found out by somebody over in Europe, and I and I remember hearing this before, but don't I just got reminded about it again and why won't my thing won't focus um, many total out vehicles that are smashed in the front get shipped off to other countries and Europe and they'll usually be smashed in and they'll be doing the radiator condenser fascia headlights stuff like that they're total outs that get sent to other countries and they say when the shops receive them they're missing the hoods and they're missing a lot of stuff on the front of them so they don't have the stickers so they have no way of uh, finding out and I was asked, how can they get the recharge quantity for the American vehicles? What's a resource? And that, uh, that other piece of software, one of many, if I could get over there, right? Where'd it go? Okay. Yeah, it disappeared off my, or I'm not seeing it. Let's see why TK Right there, CYTK, this one right here. So if you're in another country and you wanna get the charge quantities to correctly charge, find out the oil and everything like that, you could use one of these online apps like this. Uh, just for you guys out there in other countries. So we're gonna charge this right now. You can see uh, I have the vacuum off, I have the low side off, I have it open on the high side because we're going to push liquid through once I open up this valve. And the vacuum has been holding at 797 microns and that's about as good as it's going to get for what it is. Let's not talk over that anymore, listen to that thing because it's not needed. So let's charge it up and we're going to charge this up to 500 grams. I already zeroed this out and we're always going to check it. Make sure it correctly uh, reads and goes back to zero. So we're ready to put 500 grams in. I will off. I'm gonna open this up right here and we're gonna watch that count down to 500. One, two, three, go. So all we need is 500 grams. And once it's filled, it's a done deal. Well, let's shut it off right there. 500 grams that's it so that's how easy it is to charge and as you can see over there on the screen you can see where I had it under vacuum and then as soon as I hit the scale the pressures on the high side and low side went up I only put liquid in the high side so that was the bleed over pressure that goes through the expansion valve that reads the blue line on the low side so let's start this up and uh, Temperatures wise, we're 59 degrees ambient temperature. So sitting right here at this sensor right here, Bluetooth sensor, our temperature and humidity sensor is 59 degrees. The other sensor is pushed into dash, uh, duct dash right there. We are going to start this up. Let's get back here. Let's see what it looks like when we start it. Okay, somewhat got the glare out of your eyes. And push. Incorrect key. Okay, or no key. God dang it. I think that's it. We are Nissan, BMW, BMW. No, we don't need that one. Nissan. There we go. 
What? Now let's try this again. All right, now Paul. There we go. That's what we ordered. And let's get our temperatures down. And let's get our fan all the way up. And we can see that the compressor just turned on. There it goes, the compressor is now running. But why is it not doing anything? Oh, don't tell, I don't think I have the high and low side on, do I, like an idiot? No, they're just really close. There it goes, it's finally splitting up. The computer is doing its thing. As you can see, that is how this one works. They're not all the same, guys. Let me see the fans. Okay, so I have two fans operating. That one's operating, that's why you don't see no fan. That one's operating. So they got constant fans, but in this vehicle, they're changing the pulse width modulation, the duty cycle to the compressor expansion valve. And so what you're seeing here changing is the expand, uh, the compressor displacement is changing right now to control the pressures and temperatures. And we're not YF refrigerant, that would help. There we go. Oh, by the way, you want to see the different refrigerants? Watch the refrigerants right here. For you automotive guys, you have no idea how many refrigerants there are. Watch this. You see all these numbers? These are all different refrigerants that are in use. Some are more common than others. And these are not even all the refrigerants. That's only a handful. That's a fraction of the available refrigerants that are on the marketplace. Okay, I'm gonna let this go for a little while and then we'll come back to this Nissan Rogue. And do you notice a difference if you've watched enough of my videos tracking the pressures and temperatures? You notice this one's very lumpy compared to ones that are very smooth or compared to ones that are really, have really wide swings. So let's look at what this is here. Let me, uh, I gotta, uh, let's see if I could do this with this glove because I got two gloves and I got the rubber and the material. So the high side pressure goes as high as 70 PSI, as low as 60 PSI. Wait a minute, that's the high side. There's something wrong. No, on a low ambient day, that is how this vehicle operates. Now let's see the low side pressure. A high as 44 and uh, 35 that looked like yeah 35 35 on the low side 39 it's leveling out you see how when it started and do you see this pattern you see how we're getting straight there so if you looked at it at the beginning it'd be one thing you look at it eight minutes or four minutes later it's a different pattern all right i'm gonna let this continue on going and uh we might come back to this vehicle and there might be a second uh, video on this vehicle. Oh, let's look at the temperatures. Gotta, gotta let the guys know that. There we go, we're right now, we're 49 degrees right now, coming out the dash. And for this vehicle, you go, God, that's almost 50 degrees, but it's 59 degrees outside. And what am I calling for, even the minimum temperature? That is what this vehicle manufacturer has their program designed to operate under these ambient conditions. It might be a lower temperature at a higher outside ambient temperature. So you could have a situation, if it was 20 or 30 more degrees lower, that temperature might be eight or nine degrees lower. Or if the outside temperature was 10, 20 degrees higher outside ambient with a strong sun, you might see this duct temperature coming out of the dash right now it might be 41 degrees at a higher ambient and you go oh wait a minute wait a minute isn't it supposed to go up with the outside temperature not always because the computer takes over 
These are not old dumb systems with fixed piston compressors and just an expansion valve. You got to understand what the different manufacturers do and they're not all the reason. There's a reason why on a colder day, some vehicles have a higher dash temperature, higher temperature dash temperature, but I have it all the way to cold. Then another vehicle will have a colder dash temperature on the same day. I could have another vehicle sitting right here and I could have 38 degrees coming out of the dash where this one's 48 degrees coming out of the dash, but they're wor both working perfectly right. They're both working exactly how the manufacturer designed them on these ambient conditions. You gotta understand that. There's a computer taking over here using sensors, pressure transducers, variable displacement com uh, compressor to achieve what it wants to achieve. All right, I'll see you guys later. We'll uh, get out of here. We're down to 48 degrees. See you.